Hello. I'm Alfred, welcome back to Friday Night Roguelikes. Uh, this is Gun Gem, a game that I've been wanting to play for like, probably months. Um, it was actually really easy to uh, set up. I literally just opened OBS and the game just automatically went to it. This music is amazing, by the way. The castle's been conquered by an evil gummy bear. The prince has been taken prisoner. We need help. Okay. Okay. So what happens if I die? Ah. With the prince's abduction, we managed to flee here. Meet him, don't tell him we ran away. Interesting. Oh, you can also just hit X. Okay, that's a little bit better. Pardon me, everyone. Okay, so let's see what happens if we die. I'm always curious about that in any roguelike. Press any key to try again. Ah, okay. So it actually at least partially intends for the player to go this way. Okay, cool. I'm trying to figure out what it wants from me here. Hey, okay. Kill ourselves again, considering. I can see why it wants a controller, but I should be okay to do this with keyboard and mouse. This is different. Okay, so you can kind of ascend. Well, I'll admit, I am kind of stuck. There we go, okay. at the objects by dashing against them. Cool. Hitting an object recharges your dash. the chandeliers to continue. Okay. 
this is pretty cool. Yep. Alright. I will admit. A little thing that's like, hey. You might want to play with the controller there, friend. Do a wall jump. Oh wait, so there is a climb, I just don't know how to do it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Final training. The chandeliers within the time limits don't touch green panels. Ready? Go. So what happens if I touch them? Stop. There's a green panel. Hard to avoid, eh? Try again if you want. Okay. Wait, that was a green panel, wasn't it? They're high key kind of everywhere. Fuck. Gonna have to do this, huh? Fuck. What if I just kill myself? That would be pretty, like. Probably work, right? So then now I just need to go this way, right? We got donut platforms, huh? Skippy, skippy. Whoops. This one's hard. I noticed that you can stand on spikes, which is actually pretty interesting. Neat. I picked this up on Itch.io. I do not remember how much for. I believe it was in the bundle. That bundle fueled, like, my channel for quite a while. Fuck. Whoops. Well, maybe the next one will be easier. This might be a short episode because I've already done a roguelike platformer with Rogue Legacy. I have already done a, uh, quite a number of, uh, pixel platform games.
and I will admit, I don't exactly know what to say about this one. It's good. It's a perfectly serviceable game. It's difficult, but I'm not on the controller. So who really knows? first video I'm recording today, so I'm also kind of just... I'm still essentially waking up my, my video producing powers. Oh god. I am disintegrating here. You know what? I've got an idea. I don't think I have that much to talk about. Oh, I keep it right. So you know what? I'm going to cut this segment here. And I'm just going to go right into the next episode. So I'll see you guys then. Hey everyone. So, accidentally did a little false start by playing a different roguelike. But you know what, that's okay. I'd like to officially welcome you all to the last episode of Friday Night Roguelikes. I've played quite a few of them, and I realized that I really have been running out of things to say about roguelikes. Um, so, we're here at the last video, and back at the first one. While we're here, I'm going to review all the roguelikes I've already played. Um, I'm also going to attempt to multitask. But, you know, no guarantees. So the first one that I ever played was Rogue, because it's the original, come on. And a lot of people don't actually consider that a roguelike. How can rogue be like a roguelike? You know, it's a tautological paradox, which is actually kind of interesting. I think that this should be a roguelike just on the merit of it gets confusing otherwise. Because what is rogue if not like itself, you know? Uh, the next one I played was Moria. Moria was pretty good. Um, a, functionally a straight upgrade of this. Not very different, but that's not bad. Not necessarily, at least. It added more D&D stuff, and this game is practically a very simplified D&D game already, so it wasn't really that much of a stretch to have D&D be, you know amplified within it so you know Moria is pretty good I would like a bit more user friendliness but god it was a roguelike what can what can you do uh, and then I played a uh, ang band and then got stuck and then I actually played and uploaded uh, doom roguelike or DRL, because they can't call it that. They can't call it Doom Roguelike without getting sued. The same people who made that game moved on to make a game called Jupiter or something or other. It's very similar. Um, I'm a huge fan of Doom, so having a Doom Roguelike is cool. But I feel like it's not really necessary. Doom is so... Doom is such itself, you know? There wasn't really anything like Doom, ever. And there's only been so many things like it now. Getting into some combat here. Oh, God. Oh, this is it. Well... There we go. Yep. 
back into the dungeons. But yeah, um, the Doom remixes that they have in the game are all pretty all right. I think that the game is just kind of... It doesn't need to be Doom, you know? It's one of those things where, like, they shot themselves in the foot. A lot of fan projects run into that, where they have, like, unique, cool ideas. But because they called it Pokemon, they're always going to have Nintendo breathing up their ass. Which is why I think that it's a much better fit. Oh, God. Well, there we go. It's a much better fit for them to make a game that has nothing to do with Doom, but still has that, you know, roguelike shooter style. I think that blends a lot better for them. Because making it Doom doesn't really do them any favors beyond brand recognition. That said, it did get the name out there, which is pretty good. Oh, man. Rogue combat's so dope. Yeah, that tasted good. But yeah, Doom Rogue like is certainly all right. Um, the project that you know they're working on now, I think that's a much better fit for that though. After that, I played Ang Band, which I frequently call Ang Bad, just because I mispronounced the word. Uh, it's okay. It's a lot like Moria, but I felt like the additional things overcomplicated it. Moria was really good because it was able to stay simple but still deliver a complex adventure. Or at least a complex feeling one. And it expanded on everything that Rogue did in a very intelligent and smart way. So I feel like Moria is not as good. Sorry, I feel like Angband isn't as good as Moria. You know, less of a less of a jump in quality. That said, the graphics were actually pretty good. And granted, they aren't that much of an upgrade from this, so I don't really know what that is. Um oh fuck <laughs> Rodney uh, that Rodney is uh, I believe either one of the original developers or one of the original names used for it the amulet of Yendor the thing we're trying to find Yendor is just Rodney backwards so that's what that's who that is um Yes, that's my opinion on Angband. Now, I need to actually check what I recorded next. I think this was... Or no, I played Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft does count as a roguelike. I think that it doesn't really need to be... Not that it doesn't deserve to be compared to other roguelikes. I think that it doesn't really need to be. Minecraft can be perfectly content to stay exactly where it is. Because Minecraft is also technically a first-person shooter. And a first-person melee combat simulator. Um, it's a building game as well, like a Lego game or something. And it's a survival game like Rust or Raft or something, The Forest. But the thing about Minecraft is that I think Minecraft is perfectly content to stay wherever it is. Minecraft can just be itself. You know? It doesn't need to be anything else. And I think that's perfectly fine. And I honestly think that's where it should be. I was really just kind of looking for an excuse to play Minecraft. That was the big thing. Because I was playing a lot of it. I had really been wanting to play it. And then ring-a-ding-ding, I've got my you know show where I play roguelikes. So I was like, hey, slam dunk. Let's go ahead and get this, huh? Next is the week that I actually missed a video. Uh, so I uploaded a meme apology video wherein I said that I had a fat cock and I was sorry about that. Sorry for having one. Because, you see, I hadn't done it on purpose. And I hadn't. That's true. 
Um, then I played Skeletris, which was pretty good. It was uh, it's a un- unique look at inventory. It has um, an inventory system. The, the coolest thing about that game is the inventory system, far and away. Because um, the lore is just some ske- silly skeleton stuff. Uh, the combat is not much more complex than this, where it's just you walk into the guy and you hit him, and then he does damage to you. Um, it has some things based around timing, which is kind of cool. Uh, using the idea of a D&D turn as something. Oh, boy. Uh, it's period, I think. Yeah, period is wait. And I need to eat. Oh, it tastes awful. Um, okay, good. That food tastes good. Oh, boy. Cool. Perfect. Uh, then I played Hyper Rogue. Hyper Rogue was really cool. But again, it was oh, it was mediocre as a game. I think it might have been a little less good as, as compared to this game. Because making that game a huge wide open sandbox where you can go anywhere and do anything doesn't really do it favors, you know? Because whereas in this, where you're in these tight little corridors and you're running around platforming and dungeoning and stuff, that feels fun. That feels cool. You're going somewhere. You're doing something. It feels great to do that, you know? Um, but the cool thing about Hyper Rogue is that it's more of a examination of math. It's a, you know, it's a thing for mathematics. And on that merit, it's really cool. It reminds me of that time that I got high and watched a bunch of, um, let me heal myself some more. Watched a bunch of, uh, what's the videos? Um, the little, the little things, uh, fractals. Thank you. Nobody helped me. I just thanked no one. Um, then I played uh, an episode of FTL Faster Than Light. FTL Faster Than Light might be the best. Uh, FTL Faster Than Light might be the best roguelike on the channel. Hmm. Well, it's pretty good, but maybe not the best, but it's really up there. FTL Fast in the Light is absolutely fantastic. That's a really good game. Um, and then I played another one. I actually did finally manage to beat Faster Than Light. Uh, for those curious, I did manage to get uh, one of the endings. A couple of the endings, actually. And I felt really good about that because that game really makes you work for an ending. And that's cool. No snakes, please. I hate snakes. Snakes are probably the worst enemy in this game. But yeah, as I said, I loved FTL enough. Well, I still do love FTL. But at the time, I was like singing his praises enough. Oh, it's a R is snake, right? Slime is S. Video games, everyone. I loved it enough to do two episodes on it, which I normally don't do. Uh, Mid boss was the next one. I actually had to think to remember Mid boss. It's not as memorable as some of the other ones. Um, it was when I was starting to get into a very into a pattern with these. I would say. Uh, the main mechanic of that, which is kind of cool, is the ability to switch between different characters to play as unique things, and that's rad. Um, and then episode 11 was uh, Rebel Story, which was one of the roguelike shmups I played. I actually ended up playing a couple of those. Um, that was pretty cool. Uh, the production values are high. The difficulty is fantastic. Well, the difficulty is very hard, but that's kind of what you would want out of a shmup. Shmups are supposed to be hard, I feel. Um, if I don't get the feeling that I'm at an arcade and it's swallowing a bunch of my quarters, 
you know, I'm I'm not getting my money's worth out of it. Uh, and then I played uh, Rogue Legacy. I did two episodes of that. Um, Rogue Legacy is great. It plays like Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night is one of the best games of all time. And it's a roguelike version of that. It's really fun. It's really cool. It's hard. There's almost no game like it. I think Symphony is good. I think Rogue Legacy is better. Because I'm not blinded by nostalgia. Um, and I did two episodes of that. Because I ain't no sissy. Yeah, that game's very good. Um, I ended up liking likening a lot of it to Dark Souls. Yeah, that's another that's another like top three roguelikes. FTL is probably second. Yeah, FTL is probably the second best game on the channel. Um, second best in these shows, in this show specifically. Rogue Legacy is third. That's for what my favorite Rogue like is. Uh, we'll see about that, huh? Next, I ended up playing uh, Minecraft End Cities. Uh, which was just a special episode of my Minecraft LP and an excuse to play more Minecraft stuff. But the thing is, the end cities in Minecraft, for those who don't know, Minecraft, after defeating the final boss in what, in a normal game, would be post-game. After defeating the final boss, you unlock the ability to travel to a bunch of floating islands over uh, a void. Well, the void, in fact. And on those islands, there's a chance to be a city or tower. Occasionally a pirate ship. And all of those are randomly generated and have random loot inside. And at the time that I went to it, it was better loot than I had myself. Oh, God. Okay, cool. Um, so, again, kind of an excuse to play Minecraft, but, you know. Uh, next, I played Overland. Overland was okay. It's very reminiscent of The Walking Dead. I like the idea of having a apocalypse with like almost RPG monsters. Like it had crystal monsters. That was the that was the post apocalypse, and that was really cool. Um. Oh God, zombies. Okay, cool. That's fine. Um, it also had a mechanic similar to the Oregon Trail. Oregon Trail, the state, uh, wherein you're attempting to get to a place. Um, and while we're on the topic, there is a, like, there is a, I guess, parody of Oregon Trail called Oregon Trail, like, as in the, the gooey stuff inside your body, uh, which is Oregon Trail about zombies. There's also, fuck. There's also Death Row to Canada, which is the same thing. Um, trying to get somewhere when, in a big old zombie apocalypse. Overland was okay. It had a cool art style, but I think it just didn't hold my attention well enough. Um, there were just too many things working against it. It had an XCOM-like turn system, but it didn't have like a cool feeling of being tactical. Oh, God. So that really that really slipped. Because, like, the XCOM turn system is okay, but only if it, like, really benefits it. And I feel like it didn't really in uh, Overland. Next, I played Scarab of Raw, which is actually another Mac game. Um, and you may see now that I've actually been playing. Uh... I can't believe that Q is the button for quaff, by the way. And that quaff is the thing for drink. It's kind of silly. This game's like, what, 80 years old? It's still got crazy shit in it.
Oh boy. Well, I wonder what that was. Guess I'll never know. Power up here. Head down to the next one. Oh, wow, it's dark. Is that the uh, Cloak of Darkness thing I drank? Because if so, whoops. Pintor. Nice. Oh, God. <laughs> Fuck. Um, Scarab of Raw was really cool. Uh, it's a unique Mac game. That's That was really nice. Um, and then we played uh, Nuclear Throne. Nuclear Throne is fantastic. Nuclear Throne is probably the fourth best uh, in this in the show. Um, I've already gushed about that game. That game's fantastic, and the soundtrack's amazing. Uh, but in that episode itself, I fucked up the audio, so the soundtrack was too loud, so you could barely hear me. Whoops. Uh, after that, I skipped another week and did a video just for, uh, like, telling people to subscribe to my friend, who I don't know if she still streams. I don't think she does. And then we played Infra Arcana, which, for what it is and for how it plays, I think might be the best roguelike on the series. That is a really good game. Um... Then we played, this was for Spooky Night Spook Likes, by the way, where uh, I did, you know, all scary games, scary roguelikes for Halloween. I played uh, a game called Rebuild 2, which ended up not being very random and didn't feel like a roguelike. But you know what? That's okay. Then I played SCP Containment Breach and SCP-087-B. Both of those were very good. Um, I didn't get very scared. And when I watched them with my brother-in-law, he started screaming when he saw how I was playing and called me a madman for the way that I just ran dick first into danger then we played heavy bullets uh the first upload of that was busted the second one was better um that's a very good shooter uh i talked about how the visual style is the main carry for the game and it kind of gets all washed out after a while which is fine we played ziggurat then which uh reminds me a lot of heretic or hexen pretty good uh, you have the feeling of being very fast in that game. I'm not sure if that's what you wanted in that game, but hey, you have it. And that's pretty cool. Then we played AI Dungeon. Um, did two videos of that. AI Dungeon technically counts, but it was pretty good. Um, it's possibly the most random thing in the playlist and on the channel. Uh, the really cool thing that I discovered about AI Dungeon, and that was my favorite, is uh, if you just say wake up, the game will treat treat it as though you've been having a dream and you woke up from it. And like, I I feel like I've, I'm breaking out of the false god shit. That's cool, you know? Next was Lena's Inception. Lena's Inception was absolutely fantastic. Um, I think it's the best roguelike of 2020. I think hybridizing um, the portable or early Zelda games with a roguelike structure is a genius idea. Um, the two different art styles you get to play through the game with are both fantastic. And the game itself is just very, very good. It all feels so fresh. Um, and that's what I really think helps sell it. After that, we played Penance, which was a uh, sort of scary game. You were going through hell killing stuff. I believe you played as a lizardman. That was kind of rad. Uh, yeah, I dig that. And then we took a... Or no, uh, Penance was cool. I, I, wanna, I don't want to undersell Penance. Penance is like in the top 10. Then we played uh, the variety pack. The second variety pack. Which has made me realize that I am missing the first variety pack. I didn't talk about it. Uh, and that game was... Corpse Wizard, which was more puzzle game, really. More puzzle combat game uh, than a roguelike. It was pretty alright. Realm of the Ghost King, which I thought tried to be... I didn't think that one was very good. I thought it tried to be both like... Um, both like Nuclear Throne and like classic roguelikes. Uh, I didn't really think it got exactly what it was going for. We played Paranautical Activity, Paranautical Activity, which was another um, spooky game. 
Uh, that one was pretty good. I like how one of the characters is said to be David Bowie, even though that makes no sense. Um, then we played Kingdom of Roging. Uh, Kingdom of Roging is absolutely fantastic. That is a brilliant use of the swole. Uh, the standard West of Loathing engine. Yeah, that is that is a fantastic game. Uh, it's also pay what you want, so why not get it for free? Uh, then we ended up playing uh, Morphosi, which uh, ended up being a screw up on my part because that's not a roguelike. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Um, I believe that's everything. Yeah. Um, I need to talk about, uh, variety pack one. Whoops. Uh, sky rogue. Sky rogue was interesting. Um, hyperspace, do uh, hyperspace dog fights. Also pretty good. Um, both of them are, you know, games where you... They're more shmup games, shmup roguelikes. Both of those are pretty cool. One of them actually puts you into a... Like, a cockpit where you control... Like, a flight sim, and that's cool. I like that. But, um... I think that... It's only alright. Um, and then we played Orion Trail, which is... I feel like I would have enjoyed it more had I uh, had I been a big fan of Star Trek. I'm not, but that's okay. Um, and then we played uh, Gun Gem. Gun Gem is all right. And then we went back to the original Rogue. Um... So, overall, that's the series. Um, yeah, it ended up being about 35 videos, I think. Uh, overall, it was a really fun time. I enjoyed uh, recording all of these, but I'm glad to be done with it. I initially wanted to do this for a whole year. I initially wanted to do this for a whole year, but I just realized that I don't really have that much to say about roguelikes. Um, I may come back and do longer LPs of more story-based roguelikes. I kind of want to do another run of Lenda's Inception. I plan to either play Elona or Ivan, both of which are good roguelikes. Um, and overall, I really have enjoyed playing this. Um, as a result of this series... Uh, I mean, the series alone has ended up getting me, like, I don't even know, a couple thousand views, which is pretty cool. Um, the dev actually, the dev of Infra Arcana actually talked to me, and that was pretty fantastic. That was a really cool moment for me, the fact that I got to speak to the dev of it, the dev of a game, because I made a video of what he, what he played. Um... Yeah, the original Rogue episode has 303 views. The Info Arcana episode is still in my top 10 most watched videos. In my top 7, in fact. Almost at 600. And, like, I'm proud that I have made a cool series. I'm proud that it ended up like this. And I'm sad that Thubin got killed by a centaur. But, yeah. Um, so, I I actually ended up losing subscribers after... I posted the last episode of Kingdom of Loathing. I assume because people were only watching my channel for that. So if you're only watching my channel for roguelikes, I will play more roguelikes, but I won't do a week by week like, ooh, let's look at this game. I'm going to dig in and sink my teeth into a specific roguelike uh, if I end up playing any more of those. So I'm going to do like a more full LP of Rogue Legacy or I'll stream Rogue Legacy or I'll... Uh, do longer LPs of Alona or Ivan or other roguelikes like that. Um, there are roguelikes I ended up not playing, like the aforementioned ones, uh, Dwarf Fortress. You know, there's a couple of them. 
but overall, um, yeah, uh, for everything, thanks for everything. I'm still going to keep making videos of other types, just not of this type. But yeah, for everything, I have been Alfred. It's short for El Friedrich. This has been with immense finality Friday Night Roguelikes. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.